Without offensive wrestling, it makes it very difficult. If you're primarily a grappler, who does have some knockouts on their record, but if you're primary, primarily a grappler, it makes it very difficult to get the fight where you want it to be early on in the fight. So when he got the opportunity, Roman Delize couldn't take advantage of a ground, gape, a ground game approach until round four, right? But what do you think he felt in there, AJ? That's my big question. He had to have felt something that made him say, you know what, man, if I go for this takedown, Imavov can maybe neutralize some of my grappling right there. I'm going to get more tired, and then it's a war of attrition. Did you think that was going on? Did you see something else during the fight? What do you think? Oh, absolutely, Derek. And I think all of it really started to play off that round one whooping that Delize was taking. And and I got to say, credit to Herb Dean on this one because he let it go enough to where Roman Delize, he looked like he was getting back in or at least surviving a little bit. So I got to give a lot of credit to Herb Dean on that one. But I do think that first round one and the gas tank depletion really started to get with Delize. And then when he pushing up Imbavov against the fence, not only does he have the speed disadvantage, he's tired, but then he starts to feel like, man, I guess this guy's actually a little stronger than i thought i don't feel comfortable shooting to the hips getting to the knees putting him down because if this guy gets back up my gas tank is completed i almost got finished on round one i do think there was a lot of that kind of game going into be played against elize especially when you see him and we, you know we've talked about this before when you see him playing the hand down game it's it's looking for a uh, a reason to just chill like you know looking especially same thing in the clinch when they just had each other up against the fence they were just looking for reasons to relax and kind of catch back that a uh, little bit of gas tank hopefully but i do think that right there was kind of the lead Zay's big downfall that bad round one gas tank going into round two is there anything else you saw derek well, let's revisit. Let's talk context into the the playing the game, right? Because as the fight goes on, a little bit of controversy pops up, right? So weird position. They're kind of in this, you know, clinched behind up position. Delize puts his hand down, staring at the ref, making sure he is playing the game of I am a grounded opponent. I cannot be touched. And then Imovov straight up kicks him in the face, which I thought was beautiful. Like in any rule set, that would have been just a perfect, you know what I mean? Head kick. Watch your face, bro. Don't just be, you know, caught lacking. However, that's not what our rules are, and then that was a moment where I thought, AJ, for a quick moment, and I don't know if I would have been mad. In the long, in the, in the grand scheme of his career, I thought Roman Delize was going to say, kicked me in my eye, I can't see, can't continue, sorry, DQ, right? I don't know. At that point, it probably would have been a technical decision because the fight had gone long enough, but you saw his ego made him say, I'm still in this, I'm going to fight. So he wanted to fight, he wanted to do that, he just couldn't get where he needed to be, which goes to show that what did I see in that fight? I saw Imovov, bro, just being too dangerous a little bit everywhere, being able to defend adequately enough in the grappling to set up his striking and still falter. This was not the Imovov that we expected to see, and he still picked apart Roman Delize. So this is the, the one thing that I wanted to uh, point out really quickly. Uh, I'm going to bring up the big screen, and I just want to take a look at some numbers, man, because these were kind of, I don't want to say historic numbers, but this is some numbers that we should definitely look at. So total strikes, 154 for Imovov, 59 for Delize, 112 significant strikes for Imovov, and 34 for Delize, man. This was an ass whooping. This is straight up what it was, man. And this definitely showed a couple of character flaws in the game of Roman Delize. So what is more before we move on from this, man? The betting, it, it went to a decision that's kind of what we had on par, unless we you know, thought a finish was going to come and that almost came to fruition. But was this Imovov showing that if he can stay on his feet, this dude could potentially become a champion in this division? Or was this, again, Roman Delize, very hyped up right now, but should be more on par with the Paul Craigs of the world in respect to the division? Yeah, I lean a little bit more towards that ladder, Derek, where, where Roma de Leeds is a little bit more in line with Paul Craig, needs to needs to sharpen a couple bit of skills. And the only reason I'm kind of against hyping up Imovov to be ready for the championship, we saw him take round two off. We saw him really struggle at certain parts, just trying to maintain. If he had all the opportunity in the world to get Roma de Leeds out in round one, you take round two off, and it just seemed like he was really focusing on the fact that he has another basically, you know, 25 or 15 minute round or 15 minute fight going in another three rounds that you could tell that was weighing on him a lot. So that's really where I want to see Imovov approve in that in that game of being like, yeah, I still got, you know, another 15, 20 minutes to fight. But if I finish this guy right now, I don't have to fight that. So it's and it's that weird game because you dump your gas tank, you know, you're going to lose. It's, it's a whole thing. So I want to see Imovov approve in that aspect. Do you think that came into play at all, Derek? 
100%, bro. Like, that's what I was saying, right? I said, like, for both of these fighters, the other big X factor, who's going to get tired first? And they both got tired. Just Delita got more tired, you know? But Imovov, yeah, what was his coach screaming at him? Pop your jab, bro. Like, what are you doing? Your whole entire offense is predicated off of that jab. Why are you not throwing it? You're landing every time. So I do think, man, Imovov's hands were too sharp. I'm really liking the way he's shaking up in the division right now. And one more look before we move on. Apologies that we're spending so much time on this, but I do think it's important. When we take a look at Nasruddin Imovov, and then we just kind of take a look into his career, right? So the loss. He got the majority decision loss to Phil Hawes. Three in a row, lost to Strickland, no contest, back on a win. I think that in the grand scheme of things, you look at it, man. Like, this dude, besides the the big losses right there, I think he's shaping up to start making a run in the division. So, let's just make a prediction. And you can definitely be on the other side of the spectrum. Like, that's totally cool. Do you think that 2025 ends and Nasser and Imovov isn't a top four fighter? Ooh, yes, absolutely top four fighter. I thought you were going to go for championship, Derek. There's where to have a little bit of pushback. But no, 2024, maybe even 2024, not necessarily 2025. We'll see Imovov up, jumping up that rankings very highly. Top five, top four, I could see it, man. All right. Well, big win by Nasruddin Imovov. A majority of decision. They did give a 47-47 because of the point deduction, which came off of that head kick, by the way, folks. So, listen, uh, big things in store for Imovov. It's interesting. I kind of want to see a, a Dolidze-Paul Craig matchup at this point. They're both in the middleweight division. Let's run it. I don't know. Let's move on, 